Perfect, perfect. Sorry, I'm just, uh, I, I am here. I'm just trying to get onto my computer because it's much easier for me to, um, oh, here we go. Let's see if it'll work. Okay, so I feel like there's quite a lot um, of opportunity for you to, to access different forms of emotional well-being support. And I'm just going to run through them very briefly. Um, the, the first is Teachables, which is an online school, wh which you should have got, received an email um, asking you to confirm your account with Teachable. This is uh, just access to courses. Um, they say it's accredited for your points. And there's also other uh, webinars that I've done in the past, as well as uh, some some self-care and, and well-being extras that you can work your way through. Nothing is compulsory. It's, it's only there if and when you have time. And I know time is something that is not uh, available. Doesn't feel like we've got a lot of at the moment. So that's teachable. Then there is the Telegram uh, support group. Uh, I say support group. Ooh, hold on. I've got to change devices. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, apologies for that, everyone. Um, so the second is the Telegram group, which is um, teachers submit questions and then I respond. So, for example, the last little while we've been working with anxiety and now we're going into uh, like a four or five day uh time period where we're looking at some of the goodness you know some of the good things that have happened in the last um little while and reorientating towards the positive and then we'll start looking at um loneliness and what is what are some of the things we can do to work with loneliness for ourselves and also for our learners then um there are many i suppose skills development uh, sessions which are 10 days and uh, they're also facilitated through telegram and what happens on those is that you you get a, an activity every day you're not going to spend more than five to ten minutes um, on it and the idea is that if you do a small amount every day for an extended period of time you start to develop uh, a baseline skill you start to integrate a skill the next one starts on saturday and that is uh, all around finding in a calm um, finding more regulation there are support pods which happen every uh, every month so there are four different support pods that you can access run by different facilitators one is a storytelling one one is peer support another i mean it's i say peer support but it's run by a therapist uh, there's uh, art therapy so i'll send the information out on the different support pods that you can access okay let me make sure i've covered everything um i feel like i'm missing something i'm definitely missing something which i'm going to remember just now so so those are some um of, of what is what is available and I don't know if I've, if I've got them right you know I don't know if those are what's needed uh, oh the one thing that I did forget to say is the the professional therapy and counseling support so if you would like to book a session with a therapist or a series of sessions you, you email uh, Gabby, she's the caseworker on this, and she will assign you to a therapist um, and, and, they, and, and they will take it from there. And that is, yeah, I mean, there's no extra cost, it's all included. And it really is as simple as just touching base with Gabby and getting it set up. So I think that, that kind of covers everything. 
Um, does anybody have any questions about, about what I have said so far? We've received so many emails and we try to keep up with all the, the new things at school. I'm just thinking, I, I can't recall, but I will ask the other colleagues now whether they've received the email already with, you know, that you say those different uh, things that's available already or what mm -hmm. um, those courses or, or that, yeah. Yes. I know, I learned yesterday that between your WhatsApp groups and your emails, it's excessive at the moment. Is that, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> now I've experienced it that, that we, and we constantly, I'm one of the older ones that don't always look on my cell phone regularly. Well, nowadays it seems to me I'm before lesson, after lesson, and then you have to link the learners. And so it's a constant, um, checking your cell phone, seeing the newest updates, because the fact that we are not all together in breaks that we, that one can remind the other one, all happens now through cell phone or through email. Yes. Um, and I, I think it's, it's a lot, uh, you know, it's a lot to try and juggle what you have to do already and all these extra bits. The, the group uh, last night was telling me about all the lists <laughs> I say they've got lists upon lists that they need to check and it, uh, it, it feels overwhelming and exhausting to kind of try and keep up with everything. Yeah. So from my side, I don't want this to be another thing on your list. So don't worry, like if you, if you haven't had a time to read the email, not a problem. If you get to a point where you think, look, I'm sure I'd like to do some support stuff. Then just email me and say, look Kate, what's available? Um, so the last thing that I want is for this to feel like an obligation or um, more pressure in, in what you already have. Um, yeah, is there any, anybody, I mean, I'd love to hear from you. I mean, if you want to put your cameras on, it makes it much easier for me to, to have a look at everyone, but if not, that's also okay. Oh, there we go. Yay. Yay. There's some humans and not a blank screen. Um, yeah, I, I really, I'm very curious as to, to what's going on for you. There've been some, um, such incredible feedback already that I've got a meeting with Russell on Monday where I'm going to feedback some of what uh, has been expressed and, and make some recommendations to get put in place fairly quickly. Um, hopefully he says yes <laughs> to all of them. Um, but, but one that, that was discussed in both the previous groups, for example, was around boundaries about when learners can contact you. So um, I think, I can't remember who it was last night, um that said i think it might have been sally that said she had a message from a learner at like 2 22 or something in the morning and and so i understand that there might have been a necessity in the beginning to meet that need but it's not useful and it's not um supportive for you in my opinion for you as teachers because when do you ever get a break and I've experienced a lot of that with um, my, my girls. And I think they, for example, they've written tests this whole week. And then on a Sunday, they'll be messaging me, asking me about the test. And then I feel that I shouldn't reply because they should respect my personal time. But then you feel bad as a teacher because you're there to assist them. So it's kind of trying to find that when do you just say no? Um, without not being supportive. So I find that a lot of the time I'm also getting emails and now that they have my personal number, they just feel they can message me any time of the day and ask me anything. And it's, and I try not to respond. Like I try to keep respond when it's during school hours, but then it just accumulates and sometimes you don't get to it. So yeah, I've experienced a lot of that. It's it's not that great. 
No, I it's think not also you, you tended to feel guilty, isn't it? Maybe if you also, especially when it was long down time, because now you don't know, did they have access? Did they even have a laptop or something to work on? Maybe now, because I've also, that was Saturday night, and it's half past 10, because I used to go and later to bed, or 11 o'clock that time, and then they email me. And now I think, wait, or maybe that's now the time that they're in front of the computer, I better now respond. So you had that feeling of, you, and because they, I was so quiet in the class, I felt a bit bad for Kate also because, you know, they, they don't say anything now. You also don't know. And at the beginning, I was actually so not even knowing who attend the class until I realized how I can do attendance in this. Yeah. yeah, and you teach, you just got dots on your screen, right? When, you, when you're teaching and you don't know who's there and who's not. And yeah, so, so thank you for your empathy of, of <laughs> putting your camera on. Yeah, that was, and I, I hear all of that, and I, I still feel that putting some boundaries in place now is important because you, you cannot continue like this. It's detrimental. I'm, I mean, I don't know if everybody feels that way, but certainly the conversations that I've been having. Um, and, okay, so I, I'm good to know that, it's good to know that that is something, you know, that's relevant for this for this group and so what we talk about today um, I'm gonna give it some thought and strategize of what can happen in school that's that's going to be supportive and um, this for example is one and um, what was spoken about in the other two groups as well was there's no place for you to be together yeah. your staff room is the isolation yeah so lucky that at least when we're teaching, we, we see the other teachers in our team. So at least, the, the, you know, a subject team, so, sort of we, we communicate. But it is, we miss that uh, because I, for instance, didn't sit with most, many of my, um, you know, you don't see the others because I don't sit in a science group in the staff room. So all the other ladies that one really miss. Yeah. And sometimes you go through days where you don't actually see anyone in your immediate like group. And it really just depends on the venues that you're teaching from and your timetable. So it's also that's also hard. You feel quite isolated and you know alone, which I have felt. Um, yeah, and it's just the vibe is not the same. There's not you're not crossing corridors and interacting with all the staff members which um, I've only realized how much I actually enjoyed that <laughs> when um, now it's been taken away. <laughs> so so um, I think that's also one thing that for me personally, I've noticed has, you know, impacted. I just feel like I'm a teacher coming to school, teaching and then leaving. Um, and there's very little interaction with other teachers, which is, which is sad, really, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it makes you realize how important connection is, you know, with the people around you. And even connection with the, with the girls, it's so different now. They're behind masks. You have to be far from them um, if you're not teaching online. So I, I think it gets very tricky and, and all the more reason why we have to really go out of our way to, to, to find ways to do that. You know, to find ways to bring in connection for ourselves among the staff, but also how do we how do we build that in our classrooms in this kind of environment? Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any? Did anybody else want to comment or or have anything to say? I just wanted to talk about. Um, sometimes I find it quite difficult, especially uh, when we have to split our classes. If our classes are too big and you teaching, you live streaming into the other class and you don't feel that connection to the girls in the other group. And yes, we do rotate and that's fine. But then uh, when we do, I do have a chance where I meet them once in the cycle together and I can actually feel the difference. And sometimes I think they feel that they're being left out, even though they are part of the class. They can't actually ask questions, but I do allow them to come across. But I also feel like 
I can't, I'm unable to work out who has actually done the work during the lockdown and who hasn't. And it's only now that we've set a test that I realize who's coping and who's not. So that for me, that was my concern. My concern was who is, who got left behind during the lockdown, who was responsible, who wasn't responsible. So mm. that was my concern. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Margaret. And it's, it's, a, um, it's an important one because we don't know what their home environments, what happened, you know, during the lockdown and even now. And like you say, who has access, who doesn't? Um, and it gets very tricky. And even students who might have been at home, had access, had devices and all of that, they may be the ones who are not coping for other reasons. You know, um, this is an, it still is, it's not over yet, but an incredibly stressful time. And I was in a conversation with a different teacher, not a Westville teacher yesterday. And she was saying that she's got a grade 11, her daughter, grade 11. And she was saying, mom, like, I can't even remember some of the stuff that we did during lockdown. Which is no surprise because, I, you know, when your brain, when your bodies are so stressed, your, your learning brain is not, it's not functioning. You know, so, so the, the amount of information that the girls have taken in is probably reduced, you know, comparatively to, to what they might have been able to do if, if we weren't in this situation. So, um, yeah, Margaret, I really hear that concern and and I think these are these are the dynamics that that we definitely need to be engaging with um, regarding our well-being, but also regarding the, the girls' well-being. You know, and are they coping, and how are they feeling in the classes? So, so Margaret's intuition there is that they feel that they're not connected, that they're not part of, and it's important to know that. You know, we need to take more time. Like, how are you girls feeling? You know. Um. And I wanted to also say when we when I taught online and you would ask them a question, they weren't responding. They would just keep quiet. And now that we're back in class, you still find that some of them are scared to ask any questions. I I just don't. It's like not what it used to be before lockdown. I think they just so. I think they also suffering with anxiety. I think the same way we are. So, yeah, that was also one of my concerns. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, uh, go ahead. The grade 11s, um, how they felt, because I remember at the beginning when these Google uh, lessons started, I, I was actually um, so almost scared of going to sit down and teach now, although the content is so familiar. And you worry that you, when you sw uh, swap between the different screens that you are sharing with them and then you still have to look now um, if they type a question if they're too scared to ask and then I ask how did you feel and then they start saying but they were actually also really anxious because they were uh, they were really scared of what if they can't connect and if they connect and they lost it and and all of that so it was for me quite an eye-opener to see how many of them that's in grade 11 also were scared to go and sit down there and and now face a lesson, you know, on, you know, online. Absolutely. And, and now if I'm stressed about this and am I going to get it right and I'm anxious, you know, how much are they taking in? You know, how, how much are they really retaining um, in that moment? So, yeah, these are all incredibly relevant. And I, I think that there's no just getting, getting on with it. You know, I've heard that quite a few times recently, I don't know, you know, from, you know, kind of management in different schools. It's like, just put your head down, let's get through this year, just go back to normal type thing. And there is, there's just, it's impossible. There's too, there's too much in the space. There's too, too many emotions, too much stress, um, you know, not well-developed skill sets in the girls to be able to navigate, um, you know, these the sort of, the environment that we're in. Uh, so yeah, all of these are, are really relevant. Of course, I, I have a very biased view, you know, considering emotional well-being. I, I, I think that should be priority with everything. Um, 
but yeah, these are important. We need to be, I think, checking in with the girls. I think you guys have, you have a, a way that the girls can communicate when they're not okay. Is that right? Like, like there's some kind of reporting structure and support. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that in combination with that, like what we need to do in our lessons also needs to look a little bit different. Like how do we build connection um, so that we can start to, to feel like, like we belong and, and that we are in this together. Um, Cause Lynn, I don't think you're the only one that's feeling isolated. You know, I think these, yeah, I think these, these girls felt extremely and probably still do, you know? Um, yeah. Okay. Is there uh, any? Oh yes, I just see when microphones go. <laughs> I'm, I must say I'm excited to to hear in any case about all the other kind of you know the art um, and just whatever that kind of uh, great um, what can I say activities that one can or skills that one can learn because I've really experienced in the lockdown how all my craft has helped me that I could, at some stage, five o'clock, six o'clock, and then just close my books and I say, now I'm just going to crochet or I'm going to do some needlework or whatever the case is. And I've really enjoyed it. And you can, um, it, you know, sorry, it was really good for me that I could also create something because it made me feel a bit, yeah, to de-stress. I could de-stress. Absolutely. And I think when, when we are in these highly stressed, um, situations one of the first things that goes is the creativity and the play you know and and we, we just get sort of must get things done um, so yeah absolutely I think the more that we can invite that in I think it helps us to de-stress and find a little bit of of, of balance um, oh, I don't even know if that's an accurate or a, a good word to use but but finds um, a way to focus on something other than like you know the stress or the anxiety or the worry i think one thing which i really struggled with is i'm a very much a routine based person so i had my routine to go to school if i had extra meal extra meal and then i would exercise after school and i found during lockdown obviously that took it completely away and now I'm really struggling to try to find a routine now because our we're not going in every single day, um, which is nice. <laughs> so I'm not saying that must be taken away, but I find that it's really, it's really messed up with, you know, the way I, my mind works. Um, and sometimes I'll just find, oh, I've got an early day. I actually just want to sit and do nothing. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm so tired and then I won't go and exercise. And um, so I'm struggling with getting my mind back into it. And maybe that's what some girls are actually experiencing as well, is they have to now find a new way to adapt to this new type of, you know, timetable, way of teaching, way of learning. Um, yeah. A absolutely. And and exercise is, is so important, you know, for, for us during this time. And, and I know what you mean, you get to the end of the day and you're just like, oh, I just can't, <laughs> you know, I just want to veg in front of Netflix, you know, like I need the time out. And it's, it's how do we um, remember, how do we remind ourselves that that helps us to feel better and feel good? Um, yeah, and, there, and there's kind of, there's ways to do that, um, to, to develop the skill to, um, yeah, to say, okay, I know right now I don't feel like this, but I remember if I do exercise, this is how I feel and allow that to, to help motivate you. Uh, I think the girls are, are probably really struggling with this. And I said it on the group last night. And again, it's, I'll say it again now, moving every day is essential whatever movement feels good for you. So whether that's a song, whether that's a walk around the school field, whether it's 10 star jumps or slow stretching, whatever that is, um, 
it is great, but it, it needs to happen. And, and often what tends to happen when we are under stress, or certainly I know this is true for myself, is that we get tight, right? And we, we kind of almost get, get tense in ourselves and then, then we don't want to move. We don't want to, you know, do anything because <clears throat> it's almost like if I just stay like this, I can control this, you know, and I can just keep focused here. Um, so encouraging, I mean, I don't know if girls get breaks. I mean, they must get breaks during school, like to even just go around, like to go walk around the field or, you know, there's that to encourage the movement, small amounts of movement, even during the day. Um, because again, I don't know how many of them have access to just get home and then be able to go and do some exercise. You know, where do they live? What are their neighborhoods like? Can they go for a walk? Or do they live in a small flat and it's not safe to walk? or go for a run so very very important and I'm not sure how many people realize just how important movement is so so that would be um, interesting to find ways to incorporate that in into your day it doesn't have to be big so I don't know if you've noticed this what particularly when it comes to exercise or, or doing anything like what you would do with great ease before lockdown now is like oh, this is huge effort you yeah. know huge effort. so and what we tend to do is we think okay i'm going to go for a run i'm going to go do like a 45 minute run because that's what i used to do but actually you need to do a 10 minute walk because that's all you, you you have the the energy for at this moment and then you slowly build up and i think we can catch ourselves we can trick ourselves into not doing things when we go okay when i get home today i'm going to do that that hour class you know zumba or whatever it is and then you get home and you're like no it's too much um, so so really focusing on small amounts starting small and um, one song that's you know that's it literally two minutes planking whatever it is you know like the smallest possible thing that you can do um to just essentially what you're doing is you're wanting to burn through um what's what's called the, the stress response which which we would have had a lot of during the day because if we don't burn through the stress response we don't complete the stress response it just they kind of stack on top of each other and they sit in our system and we've got a bit of a backlog i don't know about you guys but i've definitely got a backlog still I, i'm you know after the last sort of three or four months and because there's not going to be an ease just yet, um, we're going to keep every day having to navigate, like you say, the what is my routine going to be today? Is the Department of Education going to tell us something else tomorrow? Um, what's management going to change on Friday? You know, like, like all these, you know, and, and that the uncertainty, every time we even contemplate uncertainty, there's a, there's a response to that. So. No. Anyway, that was that was my my very long way of saying please move. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what else is is happening at school that um, I mean it doesn't have to be negative. It could be positive. Like if there's something that is working well um, at school or something that you are enjoying, we can talk about that here as well. Everybody like, I'm talking. the only one talking. <laughs> Talk away. Everyone else is like, oh, thank goodness someone else is talking. <laughs> well, um, in saying, even though I said like, a, not, like the not having a team is a, is a negative, the positive with this um, timetable is that I have found that I have had more time to, you know, if there's marking or um, I've got more time to actually sit and sit for like an hour and a half or 80 minutes and actually sit and mark, um, which I found has been really helpful with reducing that type of stress. Um, whereas I found before, um, I've had like maybe one free a day and I'd have to do admin, so I'd have to take all my marking home. Um, so that's one positive which I've really enjoyed about this new structure. And I also, even though the 80 minute lessons are long, I find I can cover a lot more um, with 
like my students um and there's not this big rush i find to you know finish 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 or finish because i feel like we will have enough time to get through things and um, i just think the girls are struggling <laughs> to have three like doubles essentially in a row but i have i've enjoyed those like nice long lessons and that's what i've so it's been working in my opinion yeah i do I feel it's working. I must say I'm also enjoying the timetable. The fact that at least after every double that we have that break. So it's not like in the past when, when the learners would have had a double and another lesson before it's, it's break again and the breaks are actually longer than what it usually was. So that's quite good. So there's, there's less of a rush. I definitely also feel that. And then also like Lynn said, the big positive about the lockdown is, is the time that you could spend at home without being interrupted and really uh, making some lovely resources, new teaching material, um, memos, online, all the lovely PowerPoints that people have made. The, the skills that we've already required, these notepads and stylus and electronic whiteboards that we have that that's such a tremendous help with online teaching. So there our school was extremely uh, supportive with all the things that, that we have now that, that makes online teaching so much more easier than what it was at the beginning for us. Yeah, and a steep learning curve for everyone. You know, like in the beginning it was, dear teachers, like change everything, <laughs> you know, and so, I guess now the skill sets are, are, are there, you know, the understanding and you can jump onto an online lesson and like you say, not feel, am I going to do the right screen at the right time and have all of that stress. Yeah. Okay. Is there, um, so what I asked, actually asked this in the first group, is there any kind of well-being support that you would like? So I think it was Carly in the first session was talking about how how the, she was noticing a lack of motivation in the girls, but also in herself. Like there's, you know, there's some days it's, it's kind of like a get up and get going. Um, and certainly with the girls, there's like, oh, what does it matter? You know, what marks they get. And, and so she requested some work around motivation. So I'm going to put something together um, to have that, that discussion and some resources, um, you know, for you individually and also that you can work with, you know, with the girls and using your class. So that's just an example, but is there anything that you would like to see in the program that perhaps I haven't thought of um, or, yeah, just a new idea. Well, I don't know how, um, like I'm a new teacher, I'm new to teaching, and I would really like to know how I can motivate my learners because I'm one of the people, I, I myself sometimes really struggle to motivate myself. And I think it was because I worked so hard during lockdown and put so much into my online lessons and then you get back to school and to find out half your class hasn't even looked at the work or hasn't even listened to your lessons. It makes you feel like, well, why did I do this? Um, yeah. And you're doing it for them. And that just, it does demotivate you a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But in saying that, how do we, are we able to motivate the learners, especially now um, with all the stress that's around everything? Um, that would be yeah. nice to know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm definitely going to put put something together. And I think, I don't know what the, the, it'll probably be like a live chat like this. And then they'll, if you can't make a live one, then there'll be resources online. So it'll be a combination to hopefully suit everyone. Um, what I will say is I'm giving a webinar next week, Wednesday, the 9th on resilience. And and that's that's definitely like if you're interested in motivation, even though it's all interlinked, um, I'll, I'll send that information. I don't think I have, but I will send it out again. Um, 
yeah because because if we um if we're not feeling like we have access to resilience then we we don't have the energy to be motivated you know like if, if that kind of we we don't even we don't have enough in us to kind of get get through a day let alone motivate ourselves to study for a test um but that's great i will i'll let you know when you know some options around uh, you know the motivation and how to potentially work with the girls it also came up yesterday that perhaps the girls need this kind of support as well um the kind of emotional connect like the emotional well-being support and I know Russell did bring it up um, in our first conversation, so I'll tell him again that that it could be a good possibility just to find a way for the girls also to have access to some of these resources. Um, yeah. Okay. Anything? Anything else anybody would like to comment on or or? Or bring up, bring to my attention. How have you found communication from management downwards? I don't know who here is. If there's, I mean, yesterday I learned about the, the deputies and then head of grades, head of departments. There seems to be like quite a lot of structure. So how how is how are you feeling about the the communication and how it's passed down um from management you don't have to be afraid you can go on <laughs> so we've got management on the call that's why people are probably nervous <laughs> oh i know i'm I was sure there was management and management this is not a um i'm asking this question so we know you know how we can do it better um and and the same will be towards management like like what's hard for for you um you know and what are you fielding between parents calls and department of education um what's challenging what's tough yes for sure kate um i think it's nice to know what the teachers are feeling as well and get their perspective so that we can improve on what we are doing at the top end Actually, I'm uh, very much involved. I'm the timetabler at Westville Girls High, and uh, we'd like to know, you know, what's happening and uh, how people. I think it's also, as we said, the girls are finding it difficult. Um, the the parents as well. I mean, I had a call this morning, very early, from a, a friend who has a, a daughter in grade nine, and she's one of these very organised people and always on top of everything. And she was, I could hear it almost in tears because her daughter wasn't coping. And it's, it's besides just having the girls not, uh, you know, coping, it's the parents at their wits end, uh, how to deal with this uh, whole problem. So mm -hmm. I think it's um, something that girls need to have some kind of a support structure. Uh, although we have our counselor, but I think they need more than that. And the parents as well. Um, to help them yeah. to cope with their daughters uh, during this very trying time. And I think, and I'm just going to elaborate on some of the things that, um, listening to what everybody has said, it is really very exhausting because uh, the, it's uh, this whole change, the changes have been multifaceted. And um, besides just having split classes and a different timetable and uh, rotational teaching, it's also um, having to worry about the girls uh, who have comorbidities and they are at home and it, this has been a huge challenge for all of us, uh, even as grade controllers and management, that uh, we now need, to, and the teachers, to, to manage this, that um, we don't, don't necessarily have the most sophisticated technology to meet the demands and needs of the girls who are at home. So on the one end, you have girls who are at home trying to uh, get the, the online lesson. Then we are worried about girls who are being uh, in the split class and the girls that you have in front of you. So it's, it's, there have been far too many uh, challenges for us. Uh, for me, I just find it very difficult to switch off. 
because we have been at school as management, uh, I think since, since March, without really having lots of days, you know, off. And so even though we're not teaching, we're still at school, uh, providing all the structures and, you know, um, preparing for all the learners to come through. So it's, it's like, being at school till late and then coming home and then still having to uh, do stuff to, to get things ready on time. And then it's just very difficult to, to switch off. And what I've learned that um, I'm very selective now in terms of the emails that I get and the, the messages that I get, because it happens at any time over the weekend. Uh, I've also been helping in terms of um, with the girls like uh, who are in isolation and their parents phoning through. And so I've just learned to select the, the emails that I respond to over the weekend and after hours. Uh, I find that works quite uh, nicely for me. And I've learned to now know this is important priority and I must deal with it if it's after hours and yet others can wait till Monday or the next mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And, and the thing with even if you're being selective, it means you're, you're on all the time. Yeah, you're on duty all the time. And, and yeah, I mean, I don't know about management, but teachers, I know you've had like one week break or something. Um, I don't know if management's even had that. And now you've got another eight weeks and then four days and then it's like, a long haul till the rest of the year is that right till the end of the year yes, that's correct yeah yeah so these are all um i know they feel like like we don't have a choice but i think it's really important at this point to start really acknowledging that this is not feasible to just keep going and, and how can we bring in even really like kind of small breaks, you know, in a day? How can we put in place structures where we can have a weekend where we don't respond to any emails? How, how can we do that? Um, because otherwise we're gonna to get to what the terms being extended till the 15th of December, is that right? Uh, or somewhere around there, then, you know, we, is that right? Um, sorry, carry on. Yes, right. that is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that is. And then you're going to have a, a maybe a two week or, or a three week break and then straight back into it. So I think there's, there has to be um, real focus and, and I guess energy put towards how, what can we shift? what can we um put down how can we um kind of choose to do things in a way that starts to put our well-being as priority and i know uh, are there are there our roles happening uh, behind these cameras is it's like kate that feels impossible um but i think it's it's important even if it's one small thing in a day that is slightly different, it'll then add up over time. Um, because exhausted, tired, overwhelmed, anxious, um, I mean, I could, the list goes on and on. Those, that's what I've been hearing from teachers. Um, I was hearing this from teachers before lockdown. So now, so now it really feels like you're at the point where we need to make this a, um, a priority. And so just coming back to management, since we have, we have management on the call, what, what is your most challenging for you personally? Like, like you mentioned a few things here, what for you has been the most challenging, if you don't mind sharing? Um, Kate, I think it was, having too much to do and too little time. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just been, you know, a rat race in terms of juggling everything, trying to get it on time because it's, it's also, you know, having to get the grade 12 sorted out with everything. Uh, they're now writing trials, exams. So it was, it's just prioritizing and, and, and trying to find enough 
uh, to find time to do ev to fit everything in. And um, I think, um, and the same thing, it's like not having enough time to do the things that we normally would do. Uh, as Lynn was saying, you know, a bit of exercise. And so it's, I found that I was in my office for most part of the day. So I'm actually, like today, I phoned and just said to Anastasia, uh, do you want me to do your duty? Just to walk up, uh, up to Langford Road gate, just to have some exercise and to be away from everything and then come down. So that's what I'm doing. And even with Russell, I've, uh, I did his duty today and went up. And uh, so I'm, I'm finding little things just to distract myself and to, to get a bit of a variety of variation in what, in what I'm actually doing. So, yeah, yeah, beautiful, wonderful. Get, yeah, getting outside, going for a walk, moving, sunshine, uh, all of those uh, things matter. And I think what can happen is when we, we get into this need to get things done mode, it, it can be hard to, to go, it's okay to take a break. It is okay to step out of the office. It is okay to not answer this message. Um, and when we've been in this mode of doing, 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 for well, now what's been a really extended period of time, almost six months, to make that shift can feel um, challenging. I mean, I know I've experienced it in my own life. I went away this weekend, um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, to a place that had no electricity and no cell phone reception. And I mean, Four, three months ago, I mean, I know we couldn't, but there was no way that I would have turned my phone off. You know, I would have thought, Plop, I'm going to, you know, like I, I need to answer and I need to do all sorts of things. So um, I understand that it takes um, doing small things first for, for you to, to see the change or be able to do the, you know, um, consistently make choices that are, are good for our, our well-being. And then Kate, I just want to add that uh, also, like we, we start our planning this year for next year, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of a whole lot of things. And it's now not just living in, in the present, but also now having to focus on what's going to happen next year and well, how are we are going to plan for next year? So it's like for now, we know that it's going to be two timetables for next year. And uh, the uncertainty that we were talking about and how are we going to get through all that? So uh, it's, it's a whole lot of things, you know, having to wonder about what's going to happen next year and how do we plan for next year. So it's, it's much easier and it's a smoother transition. Uh, it's this whole thing about uncertainty. Massive. Uncertainty is massive and it is exhausting. Um, you know, and what's kind of in my locus of control and what's not. Um, and so, so are you, is the plan to continue as you're doing now for next year, just so that I'm aware? Is that right now what the thinking is? Well, we haven't really made that decision, but we know that it is going to be two timetables. Uh, if it's still, you know, we continue with this kind of um, the lockdown and, and rotational teaching. So it will probably be along the lines, but we have to look at how it will improve so that, uh, you know, that we take into account all uh, things that people were experiencing and try and make it easier for everybody. So, uh, you know, little things that will help. Whereas at this, like with the new timetable, we had to lose some of our classes or, so we'll just plan so that we don't have that kind of situation, that we still try and keep our own classes. Um, so that, uh, yeah, just little things that can make it easier for everybody but we haven't actually uh, thought completely about how it's going to work. And so it's still in the planning process. Yeah. Which, which makes, I think these kind of conversations incredibly important. Like you say, to hear where the teachers are at, what's been, what have been the, the kind of, you know, bright moments and the things that, that they've enjoyed versus what's been really challenging um, to kind of factor into your, planning for next year. Thank you. Did you want to add something? 
Ron? Yeah, and no, I'm just thinking about, uh, because everybody's talking about, and that's true, it's, you don't actually see everybody, even in, within our department, people come, they teach, and they go. So there's huge changes in that aspect. And then it's also the staff room being taken away. So it's as if we need to find some kind of space where people can meet, whether it's within a department or people that they were used to, uh, who were, you know, in their circle of friends when we had the staff room open to everybody and so forth. So it's some kind of thing. So in, in my department, we found um, a, a reason to celebrate because one of our learnerships, she's now qualified she's from her PGCE. So we said, we're going to have a, um, a nice picnic. And yeah. uh, so that's what, yeah. So we're, going to, we're trying to do little things just to uh, bring back that tiny bit of normality. You know, mm, mm, yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. And I think this this is it. It's it's um, it's moving out of uh, I suppose that place of, of real like survival um, and just like how on earth are we going to deal with what's in front of us to like what brings back that sense of belonging and joy. I think someone on the call last night said, you miss the laughter. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of laughter in the school. So those are all really important things to notice. Lynn, did you want to? That's, well, that's what I like, feel. I felt, feel like I walk into this big school mm. and it's dead quiet <laughs> mm. um, when lessons are happening and you walk, you feel like you're this ghost who's just walking about and um, yeah, uh, it's just not, I like to interact with people. That's why I came and taught. Um, so I'm definitely missing that. You know, and also I'm missing seeing everyone smile. <laughs> you know, you're behind a mask and you're trying to be like, I'm smiling. But if you don't smile with your eyes, you don't know if the person's smiling at you or not. And that to me is, I've always thought a smile can just brighten up somebody's day. And that's maybe why we all just feeling like, you know, we can't see each other's faces and, you know, have that interaction anymore, which is hard. <laughs> And it's, it's, um, so the, there's a whole lot of neuroscience behind, um, sort of smiles and facial, you know, uh, expressions and how that connects us, but also encourages a whole lot of hormones to be released, which lifts our mood. You know? And absolutely. So all these little things add up you know, and some, some not so little things. To, to create, like you say, this environment that feels disjointed and disconnected. Yeah. Well, I'm, hope, I'm hoping uh, Russell embraces the ideas that I'm going to put forward uh, to, to see if we can bring some of this uh, sense of connection and belonging back. Yeah, I see we are five to five already. Um, I'm very aware of time pressure. Um, is is there anything else? Anybody? I mean, this is by no means like our one and only time. You have my email address. We'll definitely be doing, you know, more of these interactions as and in when people request them or if we think it's necessary. Uh, so, if there's nothing to say today, that's perfect. But if there is, please please go ahead. I'll take, I, I'm getting the sense of this is what the school feels like. I mean, it's completely, completely, completely silent. <laughs> um, so, yes, one Karen? That, yep. um, one thing I've found is besides having the whole COVID pressure at the moment, <clears throat> it's almost as if there is a little, I, and it's not only in our school, but it's, I've picked it up in other schools as well, where there's the whole, um, thing about you've got to be so careful at this stage as to how you address learners, what you say to learners, more than what we had in the past. And so you're walking around, you're walking on eggshells around the whole COVID thing, and whatever interaction you have with the kids, you're almost on a higher alert as to 
you know, and there, there's no spontaneity because I'm just so scared. I say something I shouldn't be saying. Now, and that's just to me adding tremendous um, pressure as well. Yes, uh, thank you, Karen. I mean, this this is was discussed or was brought up last night as well that keep your opinions to yourself. You know, actually mm -hmm. don't comment, don't say things. And in a time where emotions are are running high, in a time where you have got big topics um, on big stages, uh, Black Lives Matter, um, as an example, there's a lot to be discussed. Uh, the gender-based violence, look at, at all of what's going on in our country, um, the abuse of, of women, these are big topics. And to not have, um, I suppose, the freedom and the, the safety to talk about them, I don't know if it does anybody any good. Um, but it's also a, a, a tricky dynamic to, to navigate because it does take a setup of emotional safety. And for you as teachers to kind of open these conversations, you also need support. Uh, and yeah, um, my understanding of it last night was in the past, you know, a teacher has said something and then it's been misrepresented or, or not understood or misunderstood. Um, and then there's been fallout. So, so it's definitely part of a bigger conversation, um, I think, that needs to happen around how do we engage? Because this is not going away. And it's my guess or, or my, I suppose, maybe an intuition that it's, it's going to get more intense. You know, as we head to the U.S. elections in November, um, that's a big stage. Uh, and our you know, kind of teens are very influenced by a lot of what's happening on social media and that's heavily weighted um, to what's going on in the US. So, yeah, I, I don't have a solution, um, but it's definitely something that I think needs to be discussed. And I'd love to hear from anybody here if you have any thoughts about um, how to address this or, or what would be a starting point. Is this is this one we're gonna have to have to think Be about? Silent. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, okay, okay, I get it. No, no one's willing to comment yet. No one's willing to comment yet. <laughs> no, but I just had to get that off my chest as well. I feel a lot better for it though. Thanks for listening. Oh, only a pleasure. Thanks for bringing it up. It's um, yeah. I, I just to give you an example of of some of the extreme situations that that I've been um working in is is where schools are going you know there's there's high tensions like like real um you know classes are fractured and grades are fractured and it appears to be you know kind of a, a racist split i think there's much more involved and and the, the school is going um just ignore it and keep you let's just get to the end of the year um as you can imagine i had quite strong things to say uh, about that so I, I think it's it's definitely not your school i think this is happening across the board um or certainly in the schools that i've been interacting with no. not small things that we're discussing here um not small things at all okay that brings us to five um any last words, thoughts before we end, Rahana? Yeah, no, it's, I agree, it's very complex uh, stuff. So what we've just been saying, and uh, as you said, it's, it's happening everywhere. I think our school is quite proactive in structures that we have put in place. Nevertheless, it is uh, a journey and uh, hopefully we will get there. So, and it's, as I said, it's, it's also very time consuming and exhausting when on top of everything, we now have to, having to deal with this and in particular in management with a whole lot of other issues. So, yeah, 
that's also adding to the complexities of everything. But thank you so much, Kate. Uh, it, it has been a good session. Yeah. No, well, well thank you. I, appreci I really appreciate everyone's time. And if between now and Monday you have anything in particular that comes up that you'd like addressed, please do let me know. And of course, after, I just say Monday because that's when I'm having my meeting with Russell. Um, and I, I do feel um, that my experience so far with the staff and with management and certainly in conversations with Russell is that there is a willingness to, to pivot and change the way we do things so that it supports the well-being of teachers and girls and not every school has this um, this willingness from leadership so I feel very positive that we can start to put things in place and it's not an immediate solution but that we put things in place and over time uh, you really start to see a difference and feel a difference and you know six or seven or eight months from now you kind of look back and go wow Oh, okay. It's it. It is really different to what it was. Um, without that transition, feeling overwhelming um, and pressurized. Anyway, so that's my intention. So thank you, everyone, for your time uh, this afternoon. And thank you. Know, I, look, I look forward to connecting again. Thank you so thank much, you. Kate. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.